incomparable Kyle Troop. <laughs> Look at Darren's hair as well, not the only one standing out. He's got the blue hair. Blue for Europe, Darren. Are you a traitor? Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's it's kingpin blue. There it was. I'm a fan of it, Darren. Past its time. We got team hair in the booth. Let's go. Right, Early wrap 10 for Bill. Kyle, how are we feeling about the matches so far? You guys seem to be gelling really well, bowling really well. Just kind of yeah. steamrolling them right now. Yeah, uh, you know, we have a lot of confidence right now. Uh, you know, especially, you know, it's easy to have some confidence starting out 6-1. Um, you know, and then with them picking this pattern, we were still pretty comfortable with it. Uh, I am a little surprised with how far left these guys were playing on the fresh. So uh, I've got a feeling this game might be a little tricky. Well, this afternoon, O'Neill balanced up his Weather Cup books. He's now played 40 matches in total in this fine competition and won 20 of them. Had a great afternoon. I'm going to have to make sure to forward that to Bill after this because that's probably going to make him feel really, really good. <laughs> Stu with a very nice light tickler on the 10. And we can see there that Stu is using a, uh, a lower um, a lower end ball, a weaker ball, uh, probably so he doesn't have to get as far left as maybe some of the other players. And he can uh, use his strengths of being able to get the end over end roll uh, with that weaker ball. So we'll see which option works out best. That shot looked pretty good for it to go light swisher like that. you got to assume that the lanes are starting to transition a little bit, push down. And like you said, they started pretty far left, so getting those good angles through the, through the pins could be proven to be a little difficult at this time. I have noticed the light mixer hit has been carrying really well, especially for Bill. I know uh, in the previous session had several of the you know, mixer five pins kind of fall a little late, so that kind of, seem, that kind of seems like that's his hit this week. I feel like Bill just has all kinds of hits all the time. He just owns them all. He's been bowling pretty well lately. We're really excited to have him here. That looked pretty good for Stu. The shot was pretty good. It just seems like Europe's been struggling with ball reaction all day, even with the afternoon session and coming into this evening session. Just at no point has it looked like they've had it. Yeah, I was uh, briefly chatting with Jesper during the break and, you know, just talking about how the first session went. Kind of felt like they might have been playing a little bit of defense in some of their ball choices. Um, but really, in this format, you know, strikes are strikes are huge. You know, it's all about striking all the time. But you know, with the world bowling scoring, it's um, really important to to get that ball that you know, if I hit the pocket, it's going to strike every time. Yeah, if I make a bad shot, it's going to be a miss. But you know, you have to take one or the other, and that's where we went with the one that we know can can give us ten back if we make a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And in my experience, bowling so far. Um, playing offense has always been the better option than playing defense. Most definitely, and that was something that you know we we had a discussion with uh, yesterday during the practices and today. You know, um, Barney had brought up you know what patterns might slow down Jesper a little bit, and you know I felt like you know we have enough firepower and we're good enough to to not really worry about that and just pick the ones that we feel best suited for ourselves. I think that's a really good play, especially because Europe is kind of the underdog here, and you guys have basically five of the top ten at some point in their careers. Top top ten in the world. So. Looks like Stewart gave that one just a little more angle through the front. Got it to the right. And I was a little surprised a few of Thomas shots last game. The ones that he got right quick. They actually went through the pins even better. So maybe that'll be something for Stu to keep an eye on. Yeah, that was definitely a couple boards right at the arrows and down lane. And I was able to slap that ten versus the flat ten in the previous frame. Tied after three frames. Yeah. 
but O'Neill really in the groove. The real deal, folks. He's looking really strong early on in this competition. I know he's had a chip on his shoulder ever since the last time he was here at the Weber Cup. You know, that was before my time, but, but um, you know, it's great to see him come out, bowl well early, give himself some confidence on this Weber Cup lane, considering his previous outing didn't go so well. Stu Williams came out, waving to the non-existent crowd, but he does have one very big fan back home in Pflugerville in Texas. His wife, Tina, who was a collegiate standout at West Texas A&M in Amarillo. And Tina will be watching, I know that, with son Brady there, named after Tom Brady of the New England Patriots. Tampa Bay Buccaneers now. Yes, but he's a Patriots fan. Oh, a little awkward now, don't you think? Another great shot for Stu there. Yeah, we were all enjoying a little bit of American football yesterday, sitting in the, in the lobby together. Go to work, six pin. That's the hit right there. So you must be a, a Carolina Panthers fan? You are correct. Lovely Touch. stadium there in Charlotte. <laughs> You guys have been owning that hit today. We've had a few messengers go our way so far this week, Darren. I think Bill was even looking for his pick. Yep. <laughs> yep, there they are. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because in the practice session, they, they seemed like they were hard to come by. You didn't see a lot of bird dogs, not a lot of messengers. Pins just weren't flying around very much. You know, I believe they were uh, brand new pins at the beginning of the week. You know, when we started our practice, uh, I would I would imagine get a little bit of wear and tear on the pins. They might start flying alert flying around a little bit but yeah it was definitely uh, seemed to be pretty dead in the pin deck early on in this event but they've definitely come to life it's really working that slap 10 it sure is, and one, th one uh, great thing about Stu is he loves to throw it slow. So anytime if his ball doesn't quite slap that 10 out, I would probably bet his adjustment might be just to gear down on the speed just a hair to give that ball a little more time to go through the pins and, and slap that 10 out. At any point in this session, do you think you guys are going to run out of room? Because that ball returns pretty far up there. And there's not much room past it. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we've really thought about that. Uh, you know, seeing that Barnes started, I believe he was standing almost at 35 with his feet. Uh, it looks like Bill may actually be playing a little right of that. Uh, I think it might just, we might have to ball down, maybe use a little more speed because really there isn't much more room over there, Darren. Maybe another four or five boards at most. And maybe only Simon would be the one to, to be able to do that with his little three-step approach, but we'll see. It's funny, that's, in, that's a factor that you normally don't really have to take into consideration. Because normally there's just all the lane we need to the left. Yeah, and you can, we, there's enough room in front of the ball return at most bowling centers to where you can play in front of it. But here it's almost like you need to take a one step there. Deep breath from Stu Williams. Oh, go. That's a little left. Hear him saying go, go, go the whole time. I knew it right away. They're in a really tough position because it almost feels like they need every single shot. So do you think there's they're putting a little more pressure on themselves than, than needed in this I, situation? I would think so. You know, I mean, just knowing how, how strong of a team we have and, and being down seven to one and this being one of the patterns that they selected, you know, they probably definitely want to get a win and see it. Another mistake by Europe. That's the one thing that we that U.S. hasn't done so much of. You know, we've covered our spares. Uh, maybe haven't made as many errant shots. But you know, uh, momentum definitely shifting to U.S. right now, and and uh, see if we can take the take the opportunity and and strike. You guys definitely aren't giving them very many opportunities to capitalize on. This American unit is ruthless and relentless in Bill O'Neill. Boy, what a day he's enjoying. Yeah, Phil, he's got to be. I mean, you guys have capitalized on every single open frame they've had today. And 
it, it's almost like they, they're not even getting close to the, the one-shot matches that come down to the 10th frame like we normally see here. Overcompensation from the last one, missing left, and that one just giving a little too much room to the right. Yeah, we've seen that a few times today. Some players missing either left or right, and then, like you said, overcompensating, missing the other way. It's really difficult when there's a lot of strikes being thrown. And as far left as these guys started, you know, there's really not any extra built up friction out there other than what the pattern gave us to begin with. So when you guys have your practice time, do you guys, what's your plan? Do you try to break the lanes down? Do you just try to get lined up? Uh, are you meaning the practice at the beginning of the session or yeah, like yeah, before yeah. our five, like the five minutes before the match? Uh, let's go with both. Okay. Well, I mean, the 20 minutes that we get before we come on the air, you know, we're just kind of get a feel for the pattern, try a straighter with firmer speed, try bigger angles, you know, try multiple angles. We have a few different style players, so we can kind of get a feel off of two or three different ways of plan, uh, plans of attack on the pattern and then um you know whenever we get the five minutes i haven't really thought too much about trying to break them down yeah i'm playing a little bit further right than i would like to start but it's more just getting comfortable because we get four or five shots and you know really there's only so much you can do to the lane with four or five shots but so uh, i would say we're just trying to really get comfortable make sure everything feels good physically and to be able to execute the best shot possible three frames remaining USA with a 33 point advantage. It's a nice break right there. It really didn't seem like that bad of a shot. You think maybe the lanes might be transitioning a little bit? I'd say probably a little bit of transition there. It looked like it might have gave it just a little bit of an up hit on it. I think picked up a lot earlier right there. I think this next match coming up is going to be really interesting, given how they're breaking down. Hi, Billy. Uh, we do go back to the fresh, though, on this next match. Oh, they're re yes. after this? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're re -oiling every two matches in this session tonight. Gotcha. I'm not sure where the guys would be going if we bowled one more game <laughs> on this pattern, Darren. Europe still has a chance in this match. Stu needs to find himself after those last two frames. They're again kind of in a, a no miss situation. That's pretty much going to do it. And there's the trickiness that we had mentioned there at the beginning of the match. That one looked like it got just a little more air under it, maybe a little bit of loft, but then the ball just never read the lane. Because that was on line. I just think that little bit of loft scooted that ball a little too far down the lane. He's known as Beef Stew, but this stew has gone cold. It's been really unfortunate for the Europeans. It seems like every decision they've made so far hasn't really panned out the way they would hope. You know, he went with the, the weaker ball choice, but at the same token, it seems like he it forced him to make sure he was throwing it slow enough, and he didn't really give him... It's, it's just not reading the body of the lane very well. seem to be the case for a lot of their matches. Yeah, and I, I believe one thing that we can kind of look at, you know, we, we have a few players, uh, we have a few similar players on our team, you know, Barney and Chris, they can really work off of each other really well. Uh, you know, obviously myself and Simonson being two-handed, and then EJ being, you know, the most powerful of the five of us on the team, uh, he can kind of read off of myself and Simonson. So I believe uh, that might be something else that we've really success excelled or excelled at right now is is uh, the communication between the players with the team because look on the other hand you know, they don't really have any big power players on their team except for Oscu so uh, it just kind of makes me wonder you know, why, why it's not quite clicking for them yet hey, correct me if I'm wrong but it seems to me like your team as a whole is a little more forward and a little more behind the ball compared to their team they have a little more access to rotation and from what I've been seeing throughout the day, I think that might be a big reason why they're struggling. I could agree with that. You know, that the one thing that we have been trying to do as a team is get our balls to pick up. 
you know, because you want to get it to pick up in the mid lane, and that way it could be a little smoother off of the end of the pattern. I believe that was just a little, uh... Kind of a frustration deal right there. I mean, it, the match is already over, essentially, and... You gotta think, how are they gonna recover from this? I mean, <laughs> talking to you, you, you don't want them to. No, I mean, you know, this is great for us, Darren. You know, um, and we've made it through the first two games. Uh, I believe Barney and, and Bill weren't completely sold on their ball reaction on this pattern. So that was uh, really big for us to want to get at least one of the first two points out of the way, bring in some, bring in some of the young guns, so to speak. Let's see if we can uh, close this session out, get a few more points for U.S. on the board. So this is a big bonus. You guys took both points. Yes, we went into the, the session tonight wondering whether Europe could come back. After the first match, Chris Barnes' victory over Thomas Larson, we knew that the Americans would lead overnight. Now, it looks as though it's going to be a substantial advantage. You know, the one thing, Phil, though, we're taking it one game at a time, one match at a time. You know, we're not thinking forward. Um, you know, even looking back at the first session, EJ was a little upset about losing that match against Jesper. But, uh, you know, the goal it was 6-1. We bowled great. Let's leave it there. Let's come back out, try and win another session, one match at a time. And so far, we're starting out pretty good. Undoubtedly, USA were favorites before this particular contest began. Right now, though, they're overwhelming favorites. Would you believe, folks, it's USA 8, Europe 